Fans of the channel know that I've been a huge believer in Claude, and in particular, I've spent a lot of time in the Claude Pro subscription on various tasks. And in the past, it's been my go-to chatbot for most of those tasks. But recent developments, along with a few ongoing frustrations, have caused me to rethink that position a little bit. So in this video, I'm going to run through all of the main features of the Claude chatbot, talk about the pros and cons, whether I still want to use, and if not, what my alternative would be. Hey everyone, my name is Jason. I'm an author who wrote 14 books the traditional way and worked at Kindlepreneur for three years before becoming a full-time content creator. And this channel is all about creative writing using AI as a guide without sacrificing that ethical and personal creativity that comes with that human touch. So we have the Claude chatbot right here. And one of the things that I do love about the Claude chatbot is that it is probably the most minimalist of all of the chatbots out there. It's very simple very easy to use. It doesn't have all of the same features that you'll see in other tools, but it feels like they've given the features that they have a little bit more thought to actually see, is this going to be useful practically to other people, as opposed to just throwing the kitchen sink at the tool and just seeing what people like and what people don't like. So in your regular just chat interface here, you can of course just ask a question. It's a standard chat stuff that you get with any chat bot, but you have access to a couple of different models not too many. There's uh, Opus 4 and Sonnet 4 as of the time of this recording. They also have access to Sonnet 3.7, Opus 3, and Haiku 3.5, uh, which are some older models there. I still find 3.7 to be useful in a lot of cases, although the Sonnet 4 and Opus 4 are pretty good as well. Over on the side here, if we pull this out, you can select projects. And this allows you to create essentially tailored use cases for your book. For instance, I have a YouTube script writer, a YouTube intro maker, you know, different things I've played around with in the past. Probably one of my oddly most used type of projects like this is just the one sentence summarizer where I, you know, I need to boil down a large amount of text into a single sentence so I can do stuff like that here. And projects is something that Claude started. And since then, pretty much all of the chat bots have done something similar. In fact, ChatGPT even called their version of it projects just like Claude. So they, they really ripped it off. You also have artifacts here which are different things that you may have created with Claude at some point during your process. This is also a newer feature to actually help create AI apps, which is not really something that we do on this channel. We're more concerned about writing and creative writing and just how that can help you. But you do have that option here. Going back to the new chat, you have a couple of different options here. First of all, there is a deep research feature, which is relatively new. They came late to the game on this one, but they do have that option. Pretty much all chatbots have that option now as well. You you can also toggle on web search here. If you have this toggled, that means it will actually be able to search the web to help you find answers. So it's good at getting real-time information and things like that. You can also have it extend its thinking, give you more accurate results, which is really useful if you're doing things like editing a book or something like that. You can also have styles like this. So these are just custom instructions. Think of it like a custom system prompt for your book that allows you to write in specific types of ways. And I like this better than what ChatGPT has because ChatGPT, you can just set a style for your entire account and you could also set a style for individual projects, but you can't select like your go-to styles here, just like they have it here in, in Claude. And I find this to be pretty useful if you have specific ways in which you want the AI to write for different use cases. Another pro for Claude is that it does have certain integrations like we have. You can integrate it with your Google Drive, your Gmail, your calendar in order to connect with those things and so it can read those things and, and help you out there. I personally haven't used integrations like that. I don't know many people who do, uh, but it is one of those things that you can do inside of Claude. And I'm sure for some organizations that is actually a really useful feature. And then of course you get your other standard things that you get with most chatbots like being able to upload files and analyze them or take screenshots and analyze those, etc. Notably absent, there's no natural voice processing, there's no dictation or 
for advanced voice mode. I'm sure they will get something like that eventually, but uh, right now it's one of those missing features. So let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of using the Claude chatbot specifically. And I'm specifically talking about the chatbot here, not necessarily the models as a whole, but we should talk about the models a little bit because in terms of creative writing and natural sounding human-like text, I still find the Claude models to be top in their class. Even though the world of AI is changing a lot and a lot of the AI models have gotten better and better, I have noticed that there have been trends from one company to another. And in the past, for instance, you have OpenAI has always been pretty good at things like math and reasoning and that kind of thing. Gemini's typically been better for brainstorming and sometimes can get a little bit more creative. Claude, on the other hand, has always been usually the go-to for a lot of people in terms of natural sounding prose. And I still consider that to be the case today. And I have a feeling, you know, eventually these models will get to a point where you can't really distinguish much between them and they're all good at all tasks. But right now, if you want to be a writer, the Claude models are definitely ones you want to consider using. So that is a pro of using Claude in this chat interface, even though you can use those models elsewhere. Another pro that I've heard, it's not really relevant to this channel, but I understand the Claude is also one of the better models for coding if you're into that. Plus Anthropic has taken a very ethical and safety focused approach to their stuff. I already mentioned that they're a little behind on some features, but I think that is intentional because they really want things to be good when they release them. And I find that many of their features when they do release them are actually really good features. And while the anti-AI crowd will argue that any of these companies, including Anthropic, are not being very ethical by the way they train their models, I do know that there have been some differences in the way Anthropic goes about things than other companies that I think does make them a little bit more ethical in that sense. And definitely Definitely more on the safer side. They are very concerned about AGI and things like that. So if that is a concern for you, then Anthropic and Claude is definitely something to check out. Plus, I think their integrations are probably more well done than a lot of the other tools out there. And that's something that you don't necessarily get outside of the Claude Pro interface that we have here, this actual tool. This. But now let's talk a little bit about the cons. The biggest con, and this is a huge one for a lot of people and including myself, is the throttling. So so Claude costs $20 a month, just like most of the other chatbots, but more so than any other chatbot out there, I have found that Claude tends to throttle people very quickly. It can take just a couple of chats sometimes, even when you're a paying member to get throttled and for Claude to say, okay, done enough right now, come back in a couple of hours and you can do more. And it gets really frustrating, especially if you are someone who is using AI heavily in your writing, or if you have a specific project, like I was working on a project at one point where I was transcribing images and I would give the images one at a time and it just, it, it could only get, you know, 10, 20 images before it would say, you know, come back again. And there's no, unlike the two $200 pro version of ChatGPT, there is no unlimited plan that you can get with Claude. You kind of have to stick to the $20 plan. Or if you're a company, a business, and you have a team, you can get a team's plan, which gives you a little bit more. But even that is just like it's $25 per person on your team. And you have to have a minimum of a couple, I think it's five, don't quote me on that, team members. And so that becomes really expensive right away. And I kind of doubt that it gives you that much more usage. So that really is a big con. And there's a easy workaround if you're not using the Claude system. So I consider that to be a kind of a really big ding on Claude's part for using specifically the Claude Pro chatbot. I want to make that clear. We're still not talking about the models. We're talking about the chatbot, right? The second thing that I consider to be a bit of a con, and I've sort of explained it away, but at the same time, I think it is an issue, and that is the lack of features. In particular, I would love to see an advanced voice mode for Claude. Advanced voice mode is one of my favorite features in ChatGPT. GPT. It's just so nice to just talk naturally with someone and I'm sure they'll get a feature like that eventually. But the fact that they're so behind on a lot of these features is a little bit concerning for me. Occasionally they will come out with something like projects that is innovative and that other people start copying them. But it also seems like they're playing catch up a lot of the time and I'm just not, I don't like that as much. So do I actually recommend the Claude Pro subscription in 2025? And my answer is actually no. 
This might actually come as a surprise to some of you because I use the Claude Pro subscription quite a bit. I will actually be canceling mine unless they come up with a reason why I shouldn't. But let me tell you what I am using instead and what that looks like. First of all, almost anything that you need in the Claude Pro subscription can be achieved through Anthropic's console. This is their API platform. It's the same kind of situation as what OpenAI has for their OpenAI Playground, which has pretty much all of the features that you would get in the Claude chatbot, but the only major difference is that is pay as you go. So you go in, you give it like five bucks and say, and then just keep going until those five bucks run out. And I found that the throttling that we get in Claude for the 20 bucks a month is probably really excessive because 20 bucks in the API will last you a long time, unless you're really heavily using the heavy models like Opus, for example. But if we come here to Anthropics console, which you, by the way, you can get to at console.anthropic.com. All I have to do is go to create a prompt and you get a prompt system very similar to what we have in Claude. You can give it a system prompt, which is something similar to the styles that you get in Claude Pro, or you can also kind of use this in the same way that you would use a project. And then you enter in your instruction here. Something you don't get in, in Claude Pro is that you can actually have it generate a prompt. So you kind of give it an idea of what you want and it will give you a more finely tuned prompt for your specific use case that you can test. Also, you have over here on the right, you have access to more models than you get inside of Claude Pro. You have access to the temperature, which you can play around with, which you don't get in Claude Pro, as well as the max number of tokens. You can also toggle on thinking, toggle that off or on. And while you do get that in Claude Pro, you don't get to set a budget of tokens for that in Claude Pro. You can also add web search here, although I didn't, I wasn't able to find a way to do the deep research that it does in Claude Pro. So that might be something that is has yet to make it into the API or perhaps it's just not here. So if that's an issue for you, then, then that's the one thing I can find that I don't see in the API that I do see in the tool itself. Uh, additionally, some integrations are either not here or they are significantly like they would uh, require some coding knowledge or things to set up because uh, you, you can do certain things in here that are a little bit more technical. But all on the the whole, you can get everything here in this console that you can in the chatbot and it's pay as you go. So if you're using a different chatbot more regularly and then occasionally you're like, you know what, I want to see what the Claude chatbot would do rather than going and opening up an entirely new subscription for 20 bucks, you can just come here, run a few prompts, it might cost you a couple of cents and then just go on your way. Additionally, you can access, if you go to openrouter.ai, if you're interested in just the models, you can actually go here and if I type in Claude, you can get all of the Claude models here inside Open Router as well uh, for the same price. Something to keep in mind, like if you're just interested in the models, you can get those in a variety of ways. You don't have to get them through the Claude chatbot. And I actually find myself using Perplexity as my go-to chatbot of, of choice because there is one big advantage of the Claude, any chatbot really, but in Claude in particular because it's so minimalist and, and that is the simplicity. And I totally value simplicity in a lot of business decisions that I make. Like if a tool can make things simpler, that is a really useful feature. But if I were to just say, hey, I want a simple chatbot to act as my catch-all for everything that's not writing related, which I have specialist tools for like Novelcrafter and Sudorite, then Perplexity is my go-to for that right now. Now, Perplexity is primarily a chatbot used for web search. But if you wanted to use it like an ordinary chatbot, all you would have to do is come here to this little icon right here and turn off the web search. And then you can actually actually come to this icon here and select which models you're using. Now it doesn't have a huge variety of models, but it does actually contain a sampling of all of the, probably the heaviest hitters in the industry right now. So right now we've got Claude 4.0 Sonnet, we've got GPT 4.1, Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is huge, Grok 3, R1, O3, and Claude 4.0 Sonnet Thinking. So plus of, of course, Perplexity's own model. And so you can use all of these in Perplexity. And I've done writing in Perplexity where I generated 3,000 thousand words using a Claude model in perplexity. So perplexity has now become my go-to chatbot for pretty much every situation. I use it multiple times a day and is probably what I would recommend instead. It has, I won't go through all the features. I did do a review video that you can check out that has uh, more on perplexity and why it's my favorite, but it also has an advanced voice mode and dictation and a lot of things that the Claude chatbot does not. So that's just something I would recommend there. So that's been my review of the Claude chatbot and whether or 
or not it is useful in 2025. I do. The bottom line is I don't think so. I think you're better off with something like Perplexity and then using the Claude API as needed. If you want to know more about AI and how to write, I do have a membership down below. You can get a, a lot of my prompts and my storytelling frameworks and everything for a low price of $7 in my Story Hacker Silver group. If you want more access to me, you can join the Gold group, which is a recurring monthly fee. But we got hundreds of people in there already that are really thriving with AI and actually finishing their book and things like that for the first time in their lives. So if that's interesting to you, go check that out and I'll see you in the next video.